Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Today's show is sponsored by ExpressVPN.com forward slash Drinking Bros. Stop leaving yourself vulnerable to cyber attacks and government spies. Get protected at ExpressVPN.com forward slash Drinking Bros today. Welcome, kids. Welcome, welcome, welcome. D'Anthony, how you holding up? Um, What do you mean? <laughs> I like to check in on you during during queue time, as we're calling it now. I'm fine. Quarantine time. You're all good. Are you out of entertainment yet? Yes. Yeah, I am. I am as well. Uh, today's guest is uh, a man named Tyler Cornack, who's one of the funniest people on the planet, um, in my opinion. And, and uh, he hosts a show um, called uh, Tiny Cinema. And I call it a show because it, it feels like its own little tv show on on instagram essentially yeah they're they're really funny it's the same guys yeah um same group of guys and uh they have a, a little troupe i guess you'd call it called mm-hmm. uh, tiny cinema on um uh, uh instagram that he was on the show last year fucking hilarious show where he uh was talking about tracking a guy down mm-hmm. uh for for eight hours just to do it and he was in post-production on a movie called butt boy Butt Boy was one of their popular sketches on Instagram, and uh, some some fine folks gave him some money to make a movie about <laughs> it. It exploded on the festival circuit and was supposed to come out in the theaters tomorrow, actually. Um, now it's yeah. just coming out on demand on uh, April 14th, and uh, we finally got a comedy, man. It's been a while, Dan. Yeah, I don't really remember the last one, to be honest. I, I, I can't. Like I, I want to say, because I don't really count shit like Jumanji, no. and shit like that. Like those are more None like that, family. Yeah, that's that's nonsense. A comedy is something that at some point during it, I say, oh shit. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of laughing. Yeah. Like there's laugh points, but at least one point, I'm like, hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that may have gone too far. The weirdest thing about <clears throat> the time we're in now, and right in the time before this fucking pandemic and all this shit, mm-hmm. was like. Comedy was dying because everybody was, you know, we're living in a fucking cancel culture. Therefore, everybody's moving to podcasts um, or TV if you can still get those made. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, look, even even comedic series on TV is pretty much just the righteous gemstones. It's always sunny and, you know, family guy. Um, but uh, it was always heading this this kind of cancel culture direction. Now people can't joke about the fucking coronavirus and <laughs> bullshit like that, um, which we don't care, obviously. Um, so it was refreshing, it's going to be, to see this movie at a time where, look, not only do we need to laugh, but I want to see something so fucking ridiculous that only an independent film I guess Jojo could accomplish. Ra- I guess Jojo Rabbit from last year was kind of along, yeah. that, along that vein, but that was that's the only thing that's even close. All the rest of this is cartoons, kid shit, and stuff that's just not funny. Not a traditional like comedy. Like the, the Upside with Kevin Hart and Brian Cranston. Uh, they're good actors. I'm sure it's a good movie, but that's drama. Not a, that's not a comedy. No, too. and it's actually drama. Like uh, I think pushing some guy around in a wheelchair, in a wheelchair for three yeah. hours is not a comedy. Too, no, unless he keeps falling out of it, which is <laughs> kind of funny. Sorry, <laughs> but yeah, <clears throat> there hasn't been, and uh, this is one of those absurd comedies that you know it's about a guy who is addicted to stuffing things up his ass, and it just keeps going further and further and further. But up, it's up his ass, up his ass, yeah. yeah. Um, no, I mean it keeps going further up his ass, is what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, at one point he stuffs a child up his ass, mm. from what I understand in this movie. But they play it completely straight, <laughs> like it's a drama, and this guy has a serious problem. And I love shit like well, that. Well, I would say that that's a serious problem, yeah. Yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah. But you can't get a studio to finance this shit. So they made it independently, and um, and now it's coming out here, and I'm looking forward to it. Uh, what's your favorite comedy of all time? Um, That's a good question, shit. Um, I guess The Big Lebowski is up there. Ah, it's a great one. Just because it was there's so much going on. The the Big Lebowski to me, there was so much going on that it took me I, I think the third time <laughs> it, it it locked in for me and I was like, yeah. Oh my god. It's one of those it's like a, I I don't know what you would call it, but it's uh it's an epic tale. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like there's there's different so many different plot lines going on. But not only is it great in its entirety, there's so many small moments from that movie that are so quotable and funny. Uh, people still dress like the dude for mm-hmm. Halloween. As a matter of fact, I think Jared might be going for that look right now. 
He is. Um, <clears throat> speaking of Jared, we have uh, some sad news to report. Um, yeah, he's got AIDS. He is no longer with us anymore. Yep. Um, when I say with us anymore, I mean, uh, I don't think... With normal people who don't have livestock living in their homes, giving well, them E. coli. I, I think he's probably going to have to be vegan after <laughs> this. So, as you know, we were talking about it a couple of days ago on We Are the Jared episode, um, the, the tribute episode to Jared. Uh, he finally got the diagnosis from the doctors, and he has tested positive for... Cur- nope. E. coli. Yep. He missed it. You believe he, that? He's like the guy that shows up to... Uh, to a biker convention dressed in spandex. Yeah. Like, Hello. Like technically, yes, you're dressed like someone who bikes. I yeah. guess. <laughs> but I don't see any leather. So yeah. So Jer- Jared Taylor, <laughs> and this is I, we we are being completely 100 percent serious. Um, we're going to be missing him for a few shows, but uh, because he has a coli, and it is because he is so much livestock living in his house, and that's real. We talked about this. A few shows ago, because we were. It's just, real we were that he there. does. There's no direct evidence that that's what caused it. I mean, he so the doctor said. Yeah, but that's he's just making an assumption. He wasn't there when he got it. He could have eaten fucking hamburger meat, like a coli's and hamburger meat and not lettuce. All he, I guarantee, he didn't get it from lettuce. But not <laughs> a prayer, my man. He fucking <coughs> look. You you've been there. There there the baby ducks live in his living room. Yep. Underneath a, in one of those plastic, <laughs> containers that you would put like socks and shit in, like right. to go up on a shelf. And he's got a heat lamp over them. He's got the, the chickens, those the live are the chickens, chickens that run through I the think, house. Right? Uh, no, those are the ducks that live under the heat lamp. Mm. Um, the chickens are somewhere else. And then he's got three gigantic fucking turkeys that are huge turkeys, by the way. Um, and he, that, that, that's what the doctor said. It was that he kept handling the animals and then handling you know, meats because all he does is cook out meats on a Traeger all day. And uh, he got fucking E. coli. So he's been in the worst pain humanly imaginable. And, like, they couldn't figure out what it is. His kidneys finally started to shut down, and he had to be admitted to the hospital. And uh, he finally got the, di- the diagnosis that he, he has E. coli. He's the E. coli virus. Well, he's, to my knowledge now, given himself food poisoning three times and E. coli once. Food poisoning, I think, has got to be way higher, but E. coli is <laughs> those are that's, ones that's that, the next level. Those shit. are times he's had food poisoning from food he made himself that I'm aware of. Right, right, right. Uh, <laughs> those are confirmed kills. So. Yeah, so he is E. coli, and I was like, what's it like? And he was like, man, I am shitting every hour on the hour, just liquid diarrhea, but like strong, powerful <laughs> diarrhea where he's like, I'm in the worst pain of my life. I wonder if he's losing weight. Yes, you can't eat. You can't do anything. Oh, you can eat. Why wouldn't you be able to eat? I, I would imagine if you're shitting your pants all day, the last thing you want to do is eat. If you don't eat, you just shit like spicy liquid all day. You got to get some food in there, brother. When I had the coronavirus, the <laughs> diarrhea was bad enough that I, I didn't have an appetite. I feel like you were stealing appetite. valor right now because you've never tested positive for coronavirus. Well, here's the thing. My doctor, the doctor didn't want to waste a test. He goes, I'm not wasting a fucking test on, your, on this bullshit. He goes, you're, you're not young enough. I mean, you're, you're, uh, you're too young for this. Um, and he goes, you're not old enough to, to waste one of these tests. But all the other four people I was with, they all said they, they had it as well. So I'm assuming um, either way, man, it's like the flu and I haven't gotten it since. So fuck you. You know, I beat it, dude. I'm a survivor, Dan. Uh, I am. Jared Taylor's going to be a survivor of E. coli after this. Yeah, I don't think you get a badge for that. And I do think I wanted to mention this uh, for all of you out there that are making and resharing these memes that include daily workers and nurses and cops and shit as like the people that really kept the economy going. I want you to include drug dealers in that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just, you know, because they're out. They're sold out. man. Yeah. This is <laughs> the best time. This is the best time ever to be a drug dealer. Maybe out of boredom. Yeah, but now they're bored. Who? The Drug dealers. Yeah, but I mean, look, you don't, obviously you don't get high off your own supply. Yeah, you um, do. Come but, on. Uh, there are no drug dealers who don't do drugs. <laughs> get the fuck out of here. <laughs> well, maybe the Mexican cartels where you get your head chopped off for that, but otherwise everybody's doing drugs. Oof. Um, my other favorite comedies, Blazing Saddles is probably up there, just because yeah. Yeah, they, yeah. they wrote that movie with... No regard for human life, which is how I live my day to day life. Yeah. Um, and I also like uh, some of the newer ones, 
these aren't really new, I guess, but uh, Step Brothers and Pineapple Express are two of my favorites. Okay. Just because they're, they're two of the ones that I'll go back and watch over and over again. So onesie twosie for <clears> me, <throat> I go Caddy Shack at one. Whenever that's on, I'll stop whatever I'm doing. Um, and then Animal House is still two for me. I don't um, really get down with those old movies. I do. Um, I think they hold up. and Because the comedy, you could push <laughs> it further than you could today, essentially. A little bit, but it's a little more. I, I like the more clever stuff now. Like uh-huh. it's it's become harder to sneak stuff in, like it's always sunny is is my favorite show ever because of that because they'll take a single interaction a weird interaction between two people in society mm-hmm. right yeah whether it's a man and a woman or a black person a white person a religious person and an irreligious person whatever it is they'll take that little thing and stretch it over the course of an entire episode yes and have every single one of their characters in some form or another process that they're and brilliant. Like, it's the best writing I've ever seen. Have you? They sneak so much fucked up shit. That's great. Into that. There's an, there's an episode in season 13 where they all turn into black people. And Frank. Dan, in blackface? Yeah. No, 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 no. It's actual black people. Playing, okay. Playing their parts. Uh, but they have done blackface a couple times. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> um, who <there> hasn't <laughs> in comedy? You know? Well, I know who Jane Krakowski has. Yeah. On 30 Rock. Um, I've done it too in my movies. Season 8 of The Office. Blackface, yep. or season nine, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Season nine. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, um, <clears throat> yeah, they get away with a lot of stuff. Frank, Danny DeVito's character, he's like his first thing upon becoming a black guy and realizing they're all black. He's like, oh, I get to say the N word now, right? No way. Yeah, that's but it's, really funny. It's like, it's it's great. They're <laughs> they're they're, they're writing, The subtlety of their writing is is really good. Uh, Black Dynamite is up there for me as well. Mm. Love Black Dynamite. Um, and then, dude, uh, you know, they've been showing uh, IFC channel, which is going down the shitter. Mm. I, I would be shocked if that's a network in, in, within two years. They switched over to um, saying, yeah, we're uncut and uncensored. So they're showing like all the, the cuss words and shit like mm-hmm. that. Um, they've been showing a lot of comedies recently and uh, Wedding Crashers, man. Yeah, Wedding Crashers. I forgot how great, great Wedding Crashers was. Old school. I forgot how great old school mm-hmm. was. Because it's been so long since we've had comedies like that. Um, and uh, you almost either have to do it independently or it's got to be a TV show. Um, so Butt Boy is coming out uh, April 14th. And we're gigantic fans. We're not sponsored by them whatsoever or anything else, man. We're just huge fans of, of these guys. And uh, they've been on the show a couple times. They're going to be on here uh, in, a, in a second. Uh, the writer, director, and star of it is going to be on here in a second. Um, first, we got some sponsors, Dan, who pay for this whole shit wagon to be on the air. First and foremost, ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Come on, man. You know the deal. <laughs> 25% off. 25% off everything in the entire store. Mattresses, sheets, pillows, fucking sh- uh, covers. 25% off. Base. The adjustable base is 50% 50, yeah. off. And if you order a mattress, you get two free pillows. So I'd highly recommend doing that because the pillows are just as great as the goddamn mattress. Mm-hmm. Uh, best in the biz over at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. And as always, the pay as you go program, 36 months, no interest, applies with these deals. So knocking shit down to like 20 bucks a month. Um, that adjustable base, man. I need it in my mouth. I need it in my life, dude. I, I mean, my look, life. they don't make Cal King yet. If you don't have an adjustable base right now, mm-hmm. you may not even be getting upright during mm-hmm. the day for more than maybe two hours. Maybe not at all. Like the only time I'm not in bed is when I'm here. Yeah, yeah. It's it's kind of shifted to that, doesn't it? Feel like it? No, it's not shifted. It's, I mean, I was already doing that. Oh, <laughs> so you're just living your life at this point? No, it sucks. Yeah. It's the worst. <laughs> this is the this is the worst. Has the the you seem more depressed than you usually I am, are. Yeah. I think I well, there's a number of reasons for that, obviously, but uh, <laughs> uh, I think we are living in the best time in human history. Like, if you think about it, we have access to all this technology, but we haven't been completely consumed by it. Like, we're not being we're not in the matrix yet, right? But we're also not in the dark ages where you die from a hangnail. Sure, you know what I mean. Sure. So we're in the best possible point in human history. It's all downhill either way you look. And, you know, the more and more this continues, the more I think this might be 
like 2019 as bad as it was may have been the pinnacle and now we're just like on a roller coaster down and there's no coming back up that roller coaster just goes right into a lake yeah right and you're yeah. all strapped in and you just <laughs> drown together i guess <laughs> is what's happening that would be an awful way to go drowning it locked in a roller coaster With 40 other people there's nothing you can do yeah but everybody's flailing because you think you might be able to get out of it and yeah. you can't no they're welded yeah there's a welded yeah. down um speaking of being welded down you can weld yourself down to a ghost bed <laughs> ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros and uh look you might as well sleep in comfort that's what everybody's doing mm-hmm. sleeping banging uh trying out new sexual positions all of it uh next up we've got box of awesome.com look man we talked about this yesterday Waiting for the postman has now become an exciting part of the day where it's just like, oh, great. What did I order? What can I order? Mm. And what's the surprise going to be? I want to hire a Cato. Cato Kalen? No, a Cato, like from the Green Hornet to randomly attack me. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Just so I can stay sharp. Yeah. Well, look, you might be able to do it. I think I can, yeah. Um, I've been just fucking getting weird shit from boxofawesome.com. You fill out like a five questionnaire thing. It's really quick. It takes like, I don't know, a minute and a half. <laughs> it tells you what kind of man you are and then or woe man you are and then ships you fucking cool products according to that. Like, dude, I got a hatchet, a whiskey decanter. I've got an adopt kit, a fucking travel bag. Like, you name it, I've gotten it there. And I, I again, I find myself waiting for the postman to come to be like, dude, is it here? Is today the day? What's going to be in it? And this is like the fun, magical part of, of the day now, mm-hmm. um, which is wild. And it can be the fun, ma- magical part of your day, too. Go to boxofawesome.com, promo code DRINKINGBROS, 20% off. Uh, boxes are like 40 bucks, usually like $150, $200 worth of shit in there. Um, and it's the best. I've never been disappointed with anything I got there. No, there, it's quality stuff for sure. So much so, in fact, my wife <laughs> was like, because the new one came the other day. She was whining. Oh, isn't there a female version of this? I don't know. Go to the website, Jesse. She did. Yes, there's a female she version. She did. So she ordered it. Uh, but she was like, I want something at random like that, like that just shows up. So I ordered her something that's going to get there on Friday. Something weird I just ordered. Well, what most people do is they for her get really high and shop on amazon at night yes so that's but what this, did this is a lot that's more controlled version of that basically yeah so if you're if you're what i refer to as a problem shopper i've never heard that phrase yeah yeah it's someone like they they need to shop it doesn't even matter what it is five dollars worth of bullshit a day yeah at least because it makes them feel like they did what they need to do uh-huh if you're one of those people, then you can just sign up for these subscriptions and not worry about it anymore. Yeah. I mean, honestly. That's, that's what I say. Yeah. It's a lot simpler than fucking risking, risking it all on Amazon. Because yeah. I, I buy a lot of weird shit on there. I know. I bought pajamas for my dogs the other day. Did you really? Yeah. How do they fit? They're, they're great, yeah. They, they, fit, they fit nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good for but, you. But, you know, I should have spent that money on food or water probably. Should have, but you didn't. Yeah, you didn't. I didn't. Oh. Go to boxofawesome.com today. Promo code Drinking Bros gets you 20% off your first uh, box. Next up, we got FelixGrayGlasses.com mm. forward slash Drinking Bros. Now's an important time to own these, I think. It is. Like man. the average person's Fuck. screen time was what? 11 hours a day. A day. I looked the other day on mine, it was 14 hours. Yeah, it has to be. Like, what the fuck was I doing for 14 hours looking at my stupid phone? Uh, here's the thing. Uh, you're either on your computer all day, you're on Netflix all day or Hulu or whatever you have, and then you're on your phone all day. Mm -hmm. So uh, you need glasses (laughs) to protect your eyes. They're going to fucking burn out, especially at the end of this goddamn apocalypse. Go to felixgrayglasses.com forward slash drinking bros today. The lenses are made with this. I I think they've got a patent on it, and uh, they're fucking amazing. Every time we we have them at the studio... Someone steals them guaranteed. They're the only teeth. ones out there that don't have some bullshit yellow tint. No, they're them. great. And they have like a, like a million styles. So like yeah, you can just wear Amer- them Mary King town. stole the last yeah, he did. Your he's, pair. He's a piece of Jesse shit. Jesse and Tiffany from Drinking Bro that stole mine, yep. my shit. So <laughs> I'm always ordering from these guys. Uh, it's F-E-L-I-X-G-R-A-Y glasses.com. Felix Gray glasses.com forward slash Drinking Bros. Free shipping. Uh, so you get free shipping with those. And uh, boom, you're good to go, man. Uh, love them. Now's the time to fucking buy them because you're being in front of shit. Last but not least, we got Postmates. Mm. And this is just for everybody out there, man. Everybody's ordering in food. Promo code Drinking Bros, $100 in free delivery fees you get with the promo code Drinking Bros. 
Um, what did you, you, what did you say, Dan? What I, here's what I'm doing. If you've already not, used it. Just sign up again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come on, man. Uh, look, it's fine. It is fine. It's fine. I've been on the other side of that deal. It's fine. Yeah. Um, what I've been doing is I order two meals worth of shit. Yeah. At once, and then just eat twice instead of ordering from Postmates twice a day. I've just been ordering. So which I'm actually saving Postmates money on my free delivery, by the way. True. Uh, True. But I've been ordering twice a day, and I I feel way less bad about myself. Yeah, because you're doing that. Because it's like, oh, all this food, I could never eat this. I'll put some away for later. Yeah. Even though I did that on purpose. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I don't feel like I'm ordering multiple times from Postmates a day, which I still ordered twice yesterday, but that was because I needed something else. Sure, of course you did. Um, Apple pies for McDonald's. That's what I needed. I like to go on Postmates and see like the weird restaurants that you never think of. There was one that was like a seafood restaurant that was delivering, and I was like, "Yeah, I don't yikes. know about that." Yeah, me neither, man. Uh, I don't want to get like I've gotten delivery sushi a bunch of times. It's, that's fine. It's fine, but if it's like just fish, there's only one sushi. Like fish, fish is made to be cooked and eaten immediately. There's no rest yes. period for fish like that. Correct. So if fish is sitting in a in a paper container or a styrofoam container for 25 minutes while it gets to me yeah i'm good it's a no-go i'm good just make a shake out of it put that fish in some milk blend it Ugh. the no. milk's extra protein you're getting no. two types of omega-3 right there can't even hear it go to go to postmates use promo code <laughs> drinking bros 100 dollars off uh, free delivery fees i promise you man that'll fucking save you the world um because the rest of it's regular price so it's goddamn amazing bojangles postmates is the best um, there's only two good sushi places in this town. So uh, I tried to order sushi the other day. You can order from Walgreens and, and CVS on here, by the way. Can you really? Yeah. And what, what, what do they bring you? Like NyQuil and whatever you want. Shit? I mean, there's a, they have all the sections, whatever products they put on there. So beauty, which includes like bath and body stuff. So you need body wash or any of that or facial wash or any of that shit. Yeah. Uh, cough medicine, cold medicine, first aid shit, whatever the fuck. You know, you can't get his toilet paper. I went in last night. I went to the grocery store last night. The toilet paper's still gone, man. Um, there was a roll. There was one package at uh, Walgreens when I went there last night. And I was like, I don't need this. Should I buy it? And I, like a normal human being, said, no, I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah. I'll come back l- later if I, if I need. I didn't buy it ever. Oh, there's toilet paper. Man, well, buy it, man. Yeah. It's not a fucking commodity. It's paper that you wipe your asshole with. Yeah. Like, the worst thing that can happen is you got to take a shower after every shit. And how inconvenient really is that? Eh, I mean, we're all stuck at home. If you're out in public, yeah, it would be a pain in the ass. But that's not the case. It's true. And if you're out in public, you're using somebody else's toilet paper anyway. So yeah. It's, it's think weird. about it, folks. It's weird telling your family members, though, hey, i got to take a, another shower today. Why? Well, I just took a shit. So. I don't know why you need to have a discussion with your family every time you do something in the bathroom, Ross. Well, whenever you – because you don't have kids yet, and you'll, you'll understand this – your wife thinks you are hiding by being in the bathroom of like, hey, you don't want to play with your kids. Right. It's not the case. Um, but now you got to explain <laughs> the, hey, man, I got to. Just take the kids in there with you. Uh, good luck. That's my time in there. No. It's like, it's like the Goonies, man. Like, it's all over once you ride up Troy's bucket. When, I, when I'm in the toilet, that is my time, dude. I don't, it's not kick in the door, you know. Break in the four four like I, I'm <clears throat> I'm good, dude. You don't like when their little hands come underneath the, the no, and that happens all the time. <laughs> dad, Dad, are you out? Are you done? Are you done? Are you done? Are you? Uh, that's what you hear, and then you see their hands underneath mm-hmm. the door, and you're like, get the, just get away from the door. You're always maybe six seconds away from saying the word fuck too, yeah. or you're just like, just get the fuck away from the door. I'm never gonna be able to do that. <laughs> Like, I'll never not be able to just – whomever is causing me any kind of grief at all, I'm going to swear at them. Oh, I don't damn. care if it's my children or yours or no. old uh, people, fucking dogs, uh, uh, my computer, whatever nope. it is. is there's No. Never meant to have children, Dan. There's people in this life who are never meant to have children. And, Maybe. Uh, yeah. You're one of them. You're one of them. Uh, let's get uh, Tyler Kornack on the uh, horn here. If you're watching the, the used tubes, uh, subscribe to us on uh, Drinking Bros Podcast. <laughs> Um, with all of our shows, Drinking Broettes is on there, Ross Patterson Revolution, Drinking Bro Sports, Savage Saturdays are all on there. We are coming to you every single day during the quarantine, which, look, if you listen to John Brinkus uh, last night, could be till June 10th. So yeah. 
I mean, it is in fucking Virginia where he is. <laughs> I know. That's why I said that. Like, fuck. Could you imagine? <sighs> We're going to record Friday. I'm going to make a post in, uh, yes. uh, in Conspiracy Theories. We're going to do a conspiracy show with John Brankis. So he hosted and, uh, and was a producer for a bunch of those sci-fi channel shows, yep. like the paranormal ones and all that shit. So he's got the real good good on uh, if that shit really went down or not. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, subscribe to us. Look, we're, we're going every day with you guys. We know there's a lot of people out there who, who don't have any uh, entertainment or content. So we're trying to bring it to you every single day. Right now, we're going to patch in uh, Tyler from Tiny Cinema. So what do you do? Detective. You look like every detective ever. Oh, yes. How? He's got the, the greasy hair and the, uh, the earring. <laughs> so he's good. You look good. What about you? What? What do you do? Potential tragedy strikes Critica County today as law enforcement have yet to make any headway on the missing child that vanished from Kathman Park this morning. So you're asking me to go off this theory you got about a white married male who happens to be a father living in the suburbs of Critica County, who also happens to be your AA sponsor, has been secretly running around, cramming objects, animals, and children up his ass. Then he somehow digests them, and he does this in sprees, almost in serial killer fashion. Is that about it? Uh-huh. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back. We're all really concerned about, and I brought this up on the fake news two weeks ago, by the way. Yeah. About how are we taking care of our drug dealers right now? How are we taking care of our drug dealers in a time like this? Or are they taking care of us? I don't know. We've got special guest Tyler Kornack here from Tiny Cinema in the house today. He was on the show. You, you've been on a couple times now, I feel like, right? Yeah, a few times, yeah. yeah. Good to be back. Nice segue with the drugs. Yeah, you're mm. welcome. Look, if there's one person to talk to during the apocalypse about drugs, it's it's probably you, I would imagine. Right? Yeah. yeah. Yes, absolutely. That's what I'm here for. I don't know. You have a a, a way of taking things too far. <laughs> and what I mean Thank by you. that is that there was a one-minute sketch called Butt Boy on your very well-liked Tiny Cinema YouTube channel, and all of a sudden now it's a fucking feature-length movie. So. Uh, that to me is probably taking it too far. <laughs> it is. I agree. I, it took me this long to realize that. You know. So last time you were on the show, I, I believe it was about a year ago when we were out in LA, and you were in, I believe, some form of post production on this. Um, if you don't yeah. follow Tiny Cinema on Instagram, you should. It is the very best Instagram out there. Uh, Butt Boy oh, was one you. of everybody's fam- favorite sketches. And someone gave you, what, $3 million to make a movie about this? No, 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 not that much. Not even close. Oh, it wasn't? Okay, uh, good. Good. I was like, no, Jesus no, Christ. No, no, no. That would have been a no lot. No fucking way. That would have been awesome. It <laughs> would have been a better movie. Yeah. I, look, uh, it, it seems to have been a great movie. You were in Fantastic Fest, which is next to impossible to get in, and it crushed. Like, I, I was following along at, at home like a fan. Um, watching oh, all nice. the responses and the reviews, and I was texting you. I was like, "Holy shit, this is crazy!" And you're like, "Dude, I think we're gonna get a theatrical deal out of this." Um, yeah, and which then, is now canceled. It is so. It is canceled um, from the it's pandemic. Canceled. God damn it! Yeah, it's canceled. It hasn't. It hasn't officially been 
said, but yeah, we're assuming, you know. Yeah. Nobody nobody cares about our little movie and there's bigger things going on. But anyways, we didn't even make it for theatrical. We made it for people just to smoke weed at home and get lost yeah. in it, you know. Yeah, I look it, it, the whole idea. It couldn't come out at a better time because we're short on content. In particular comedy. There is no comedies being made right now. And your movie comes out what, April fourteenth? April fourteenth, yeah. It's funny, we had a phone call the other day, like we're like, How can we spin this, you know, in a in a not not taking it too far, like you said, but how can we kind of make this about the virus? That was the whole <laughs> that's what the whole call was about. And I was like, I'm a sick person. I have to get off the phone. No, dude, but- you're you're <laughs> fine. I mean, look, you have to, I think, exploit it where you can. Um, because me, yeah. look, I've I've already said this. I fucking had it. It was like three days. I'm over life at this point. I like I, I'm immune. I'm above the law as far as coronavirus. Yeah, goes. and I've been I've been spending my time uh, telling old people on Facebook they should just go die and let our economy get back to normal. Yeah, so <laughs> we're fine with exploiting a movie. Like we yeah. need comedy during this point, and uh, I've been yeah. waiting for this this movie for a year now. Um, oh, thanks, man. I it, appreciate it. It's finally <laughs> almost here. We're 13 days away. Uh, it's been a long road. It's a taken ve- a long time. A, a very long road. And I, I can, in all sincerity, I, I can imagine you're disappointed that, you know, it's not going into theaters. Because that's every filmmaker's dream, um, is yeah. to get into theaters. Yeah, it was it was a bummer. But at the same time, like I said, we weren't expecting to get that. Like, that always felt a little bit like, whoa, what? Like, we, you know, even in select theaters, because it wasn't made for that. And uh, it would have been great. It would have been great to see people go do that and be weirded out by the movie. But, um but yeah, what can you do? Can't do anything. Um, yeah. How, how you guys been holding up? Well, uh, here's what I would do. I would try to. I would tell your fans to show the movie to somebody that's not familiar with Tiny Cinema and record their reaction to certain scenes. Maybe go through and pick out the most fucked up scenes. <laughs> oh, totally. There's actually been there's been a bunch of YouTubers that have put even with the trailer of people who don't know what the hell it is yeah. that the youtube reactions are pretty fucking <laughs> yeah, great i, I can watch those all day yeah, yeah. and, and what we're gonna just... do we're gonna we're gonna put the trailer in the middle of this video on our drinking bros podcast page so that way oh, whenever great. whenever somebody watches it uh at least they can see this fucked up trailer and know that there's somebody else out there trying to create magic as well um but we've been holding up fine by the way a lot of drugs dan you you've been going through lean yeah yeah lean like um, lil wayne yeah Pretty much. Just start rapping, dude. Although I use Kilcliff CBD instead of uh, Sprite or whatever. Yeah, to cut it as, yeah. a, as a nice cutter for that because you yeah, can't you can drink it straight. Jolly, you can put a Jolly Rancher in it. Have you heard that theory? Yeah. Mm. yeah. No, actually, I can drink it straight. Oh, uh, yeah. You, you don't mind drinking it no. straight. Yeah. I'm, I go Purple I've, Sprite. I'm the city of the Purple Sprite. I'm with Drake on this one. I'll, I'll pour uh, it in Sprite. I've eaten, Sprite and, sorry, I've, I've, eaten, I've eaten a breakfast omelet MRE. Mm-hmm. And uh, our military listeners will know exactly what that means. Yeah, so like, you're fine. You I can, can eat anything. Does that yeah. just mean you put lean on your omelet? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it would have certainly Cooked. tasted. I tried to feed one of them to uh, an Iraqi dog one time, and it ran away. So oh, Jesus, <laughs> that's not a joke. I've got I've got video of it somewhere. <laughs> really? Yeah, that's really funny. Yeah. Um, you're, where do you get it from? Where do you get that stuff from? From Lean? Uh, uh, we, 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 we have a dealer. Yeah, yeah we have a. Uh, oh, okay. Look, we have nine point one million listeners now. Like. There's, yeah, there's plenty of drug dealers guy. out there. Um, and then a lot of people just send it in. So, like, the last one we bought, um, when we went to the P.O. box to pick it up, um, I don't even know if we should be telling this on air. It doesn't matter now. We're all going to die anyways, according to <laughs> fucking CNN. Um, somebody else, another listener, had sent it in, and it was his girlfriend's bottle. So her name was uh, on it, and, and, <laughs> and they were like, Becky's got a sore throat or whoever the fuck it was. And they were like, hot, hot chicks always have it, dude. Always? Yeah. Why is that? Because so, doctors prescribe weird shit to hot chicks, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. I, yes, man. That's, that's one way to get them in bed. Uh, but you're, in, you're yeah. in L.A. All, all the dispensaries are open, right? I think so, yeah. I just go I, – I order through MedMen, which is like the Apple store of weed. Yeah, I love MedMen. I go there every time yeah, we're in L.A. or Vegas. Yeah. One. So great. And Um, and their business is booming. Yeah, they're delivering. I think the weed, yeah, I think drugs have really thrived in this. Like the dealers down, they're they're making some good money, you know. Really? That would be my guess. Really? I know know that's the fact with with weed, but uh, I would assume heroin's the same, you know. (sighs) Yeah, I don't know that fiending changes based on the economy. People always want heroin. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, one would imagine that. That that drug's always on the up and up. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I want, I need some MDMA. So if you're out there and you've got some, 
just ship it on over to the P.O. Box. P.O. Box 3793, Wilmington, North Carolina, 28406. Yeah. yeah. Send a little Molly. Ship that in. Because uh, we, we were going to watch Cats live and then um, on various drugs and then just, oh, just do a live watch show. Oh, do, do you want us to watch Butt Boy on drugs can on the you, show? And yeah. just, and can just you should take a, take a Molly and watch Butt Boy. Can you uh, send us a copy? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I, totally. Actually, we'll, we'll just buy it. I, yeah, it's, oh, it's yeah, out, where is it? It's, it's, it's out in 11 it. days. Yeah, tell everybody where it's going to be out at. Uh, it's going to be everywhere, basically. It's going to be on um, Amazon Prime. Oh, we'll just buy I, it. iTunes, yeah. uh, Google Play, Xbox, PlayStation, everything. Great, we'll just buy it. Everything yeah. but Netflix, basically. Um, and then will it, will it, I'm assuming it, it will eventually go there. Yeah, that's the idea. So we just got to bring in our Netflix. We got to get a bunch of people to watch. Amazon's going to kind of be our hub mm -hmm. for people to rent. And then we're going to kind of take those numbers into Netflix. They, they already know about the movie. So we're trying to get it on there because that's where it would, uh, that's where it would thrive, I think. So yeah, and look, go out and support the movie. Buy the movie. We're gonna buy the movie. Uh, the, like the second it comes out, we're gonna buy it because once it goes to Netflix, Netflix doesn't pay you shit, and everybody ends up watching it on Netflix. Like you got to support the filmmakers. And uh, oh, that's if, nice. If you want to, well, if you want to see more comedies, I mean, shit, I can't name another comedy that's coming out this year. Can you? No, I mean, we we always talk about that, as you can imagine. I mean, this is kind of a weird offbeat com. This is a weird comedy, but it is a comedy nonetheless. But yeah, there's not, there's nothing, man. There's nothing like it, like it used to be. Anyways, you know, I feel like ten years ago, even there was a lot more coming out. Yeah, it's a very strange thing. <laughs> and even when we were in Fantastic Fest watching the movie, I was like, you know, it's one thing to have this idea to make a movie, but then when you're sitting in a theater full of people, you're kind of like. Oh boy, maybe we should have made like a dumb Will Ferrell movie because this is we don't know how this is going to be received. But it ended up going great, and uh, you know, I yeah, there's not a lot of comedy right now. It's just kind of a it's kind of dry out there, which is weird. That movie, The Hunt, is coming out this year. That's comedy for me. Yeah, well, uh, so The <laughs> Hunt they actually just dumped uh, two days ago. Uh, Jared, just our co-host, our co-host Jared is out with E. coli. By the way, he's the only person to. Uh, get another disease during a pandemic mm. that is, oh jesus uh, yeah you want probably, to talk about pain probably from the livestock that lives inside of his house that's what we're being told dead serious jesus christ yeah. he bought Have I met him was he on yeah, last yeah, yeah. yeah yeah he was on the last he's the fat guy with the is. beard yeah he has a livestock vibe yeah <laughs> everybody's got that one friend who's got the livestock vibe yeah he's yeah. got so he's got seven baby ducks he bought three gigantic turkeys um, how many roosters and chickens? I have no idea. Seventeen. <clears throat> like, boredom. Boredom. He's got a. He just bought like a eight acre property, a, a ten thousand square foot house on an eight acre property, and uh, and he's on the he's on the waiting list for two miniature donkeys. Mm. Um, Jesus. Yeah. So they, what do you what do you think of Tiger King? Oh, <sighs> come on, dude. We did a full multiple I'm shows sure. on Ross Patterson Revolution, and this. I think uh, somebody. Uh, posted a picture this morning of him and danny mcbride side by side mm -hmm. and it's yeah. like one of those your move hollywood kind of deals yeah can yeah. you can you imagine because uh, I, I have some good news to report on that i think danny mcbride would do it uh, yes yes he would do it in a second um but I, mm -hmm. I have some good news to report on that this is an odd story and it's so unbelievable that it makes it'll make sense when you hear it but this was an actual tiger king was actually a a, a podcast before it was a a thing on Netflix, and it was on Wonder. Oh, really? Kate McKinnon from Saturday Night Live heard it, bought the rights, is the executive producer, and she is playing Carol in the series. I saw that. I saw that. Which is incredible. Because as soon as you hear that, that she's playing Carol, you can already hear her voice as Carol. So oh, now totally. Variety is kind of writing in who their, their dream list would be for the rest of the roles. And mm -hmm. uh, Sam Rockwell <laughs> came in at number one for... Uh, I could see that. Exot Joe Exotic. I could see that. Also, yeah. I liked, uh, this is a weird one, but Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton looks a lot like him. If you put them side <laughs> by side, it's pretty fucking, it's pretty fucking wild. <laughs> that's a great one, actually. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the one I'm rooting for. Dude. That would just be fucking wild. Well, he's, I mean, they're both great. Those are two really good actors, Sam Rockwell. Michael yeah. Keaton. Yeah. Because I, I think you need I to do it like Buck like, You got to play it like yeah, a drama. Like, exactly. I feel like McBride would uh he's like the he, he would be the the one everybody would think about the bat be like the more commercial version of it but uh 
like as far as getting someone to really emulate him, Michael Keaton, I think, would crush it. Oh, uh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, because like, what if Christian Bale did it? And oh. he and he like put his body through everything that the Tiger King has actually put his body through. You know, he's into that <laughs> method. Yeah, that <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, he just fucks dudes. He fucks dudes, and he gets on meth for a while. If, if we're going <clears> method, <throat> though, we got to go DDL uh, number one with a bullet. He's, Daniel Day Lewis as Tiger King. He's too tall. Tiger King. <laughs> He's tall. That'd be no, he's like five nine, probably. Yeah, you... I am a tiger king. Yeah, oh, could you imagine, dude? Speaking of preparing for roles, uh, for for those of you who don't know what Butt Boy is about, uh, can you give us oh, a quick yeah. synopsis, and then I'm going to ask my my journalistic question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Butt Boy is about a guy who uh, has a shitty job, shitty marriage, goes to get a <laughs> prostate exam. Uh, and becomes thrilled with the feeling it gives them, and it consumes his life. And then uh, a detective, he, up to the point of putting children up his ass and animals, and uh, <laughs> a, de- a detective, a detective comes along and tries to figure it all out. And it's a cat and mouse game. But, uh, <laughs> that old classic tale, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. But it's played like a classic tale. I mean, I've said this a million times to you guys, but uh, but it's played straight and it doesn't uh, it doesn't back out of the bit. It's on it's unapologetically uh, straight. Did you do any focus groups on this? And what like did you find where the laugh points are and edit based on that? I mean, because it's such a weird. It's going to be such a weird movie. We just kind of went for it, man. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we cut that. We cut out a lot. Like there was a lot of shit that was like too funny in a way because it would be like, oh, this is stupid. It's too stupid. We have to just play it straight and be loyal to that. So we cut out some like two scenes that were too goofy. Mm-hmm. Um, if that makes sense, <laughs> yeah. it, it does. You see yeah. it, it's, it's not going to be what you expect. You're not going to laugh in the way that you expect to laugh. You're going to be like, "Oh, this is fuck." It's it's treated with care and like a real movie. Yeah. And you're like, you have to remind yourself throughout it that you're watching uh, what I just said, what it's about. So, yeah, it's weird. Did you DD? But, did you DDL this? Yeah, did you go full? Like, did you put stuff up your ass to to prepare for? Actually, role? there's one shot. Actually, my butt's not even in it a lot of the time. It's this other guy's because I wanted to see the shot. But uh, th- there's one shot where I put a real light bulb up my ass. I'm sorry, a light bulb. A light bulb. Which like, we'll see. Which end of the light bulb? Yeah, which what, end of the light bulb? What type of yeah, bulb? You guys are gonna have to watch and find out. <laughs> Is, and that's the biggest you got. No, it's, you a quick, it's a quick shot. I don't really go up my butt, but it's it's real shot. You see, it's real. Okay. Um, and for the, for those of you at home who don't know what absurdist comedy is, because this is what this is, it's yeah the craziest fucking comedy you could ever imagine, but it is played completely straight as if it is a drama, therefore inciting the 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 highest form of laughter I've ever had. Um, the last one that I can remember uh, absurdist comedy wise being made was a movie actually called The Comedy with uh, Tim and Eric. Oh, I love that movie. Same. And uh, I'm, yeah. I'm assuming it's it's kind of on the same vibe. Yeah, it's not. I, that's a little slower. It's a little slower. This has more plot to it. It's a little bit pulpier. It moves a little bit more. Like great. There's a lot. There's a lot of familiar territory in it. So you've like, oh, I've been in this movie before. This is a, <clears> a this is a classic <throat> thriller. I've been in this. I've been in this diner before with these guys. But you have to remind yourself it's about the butt. Sure. Shit, so. Yeah, because when I was watching the when I was watching the comedy, I remember uh, there was a scene where a girl has a a full on seizure during sex. Yeah, the boat. I uh, remember that. But it's 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 forty seconds of her having a fucking full on epileptic seizure on this boat, and he's just watching her drinking scotch uh, out of a glass, and he's really into it. And I was like, that character's so dark, man. Oh, dude. What what about teeth? You guys remember that movie, right? Oh, I love teeth. That would be a closer. Uh, that would be a closer comparison. Teeth. Match. Okay. Are you familiar with? Oh teeth? yeah, yeah. It's a German flick about a woman that has vagina dentata, which is where her vagina has, has teeth. teeth. Yeah. And she keeps getting yeah. ra- raped for some reason, over and over. But every time she <laughs> gets, just like it. Every yeah, time she exactly. gets raped, the weird. guy's dick gets bit off. But for some reason, this one particular woman just keeps getting raped. By de- yeah, this, yeah. any dude she meets rapes her. I don't know what the deal is. <laughs> I mean, I guess it made the movie make sense, but other than that, it seems unrealistic to me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No one gets raped in this, and uh, this is the <laughs> this is the American version. That one's a little bit, you know, it's a little bit more for this. Is the American version of teeth. 
<laughs> oh, God damn it. I can't wait. We're 13 days away. Butt Boy is out on April 14th. Last time you were here, we talked about uh, you following someone in a car yep. for eight mm-hmm. hours and uh, wanting to murder mm-hmm. them. We got a ton of messages about that. And it turns out there is a lot of people who do this. I was surprised. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. Have you got you guys honestly? I know we're just saying this, but you guys should <laughs> try it together. Uh, yeah, I I highly encourage it. And all you do is just pick out, just go to a parking lot. I mean, I, maybe wait till this is all over because it's gonna be dark. <laughs> it's gonna be a little too dark if you do it right now. But uh, you know, when this is over, just pick someone, follow them around, see what happens. You know. Yeah, we're gonna have to wait till the pandemic's over because obviously we're just gonna be sitting in front of their house all day. But, yeah, um, that's yeah. fine with me though. <laughs> Look, I've, I've actually, I've actually done that professionally. I've, I've tracked people professionally before. Yeah. So we can have fun doing it. Yeah. Did you have fun when you did that? Was that like a thrill for you? Um, it's it gets monotonous over time. If you do yeah. it, like if, if I just decided randomly to do it one day, it would probably be fun. But if I yeah, like doing it, you can go home whenever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. When yeah. you're when you're following some meth head around town because he's threatened the president of one of the largest law firms in the country, that's not exactly exciting. It's a meth head. I mean, it's funny. Don't get me wrong. They do a lot of stupid shit. Sure. Like, you mm-hmm. can see them. It takes way too long for them to open their car doors. I found that out. Huh. Yeah. Like, there's their brain and hands are moving so fast that doing something simple like that becomes a problematic. Yeah. So. <clears throat> and just being on meth is funny. Yes. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I, I actually like the heroin, though, because there's something about heroin that defies the laws of gravity. Have you, You've lived in L.A., so you know oh, yeah. this. Like, people will inject three times the amount of heroin they actually need to get high Mm -hmm. but somehow they won't hit the ground completely they'll be leaned over yes very zoomanity as long as long as i don't know what the rule is as long as your hips don't touch the ground or or like i don't know what it is it's very lava is the floor for anyone who's shooting up heroin if there's only three points of contact i think if you have three points of contact you're fine yeah but once that other hand goes down that's then it, you're out. Yeah, then you're a pussy. <laughs> and the heroin yeah. community. It's, like a, it's a game. Yeah. It is. It's a game like, they all Go play. watch it. If you go to go to downtown Salt Lake City and walk around. Oh, Philip yeah. Philip Seymour Hoffman lost that game. He yes, did. Yes, he did, yes. And Kobe Bryant lost the helicopter Olympics. Yeah, he did. He did. I was surprised about Philip Seymour Hoffman, though, speaking of. That he was yeah. uh, I, I, I had heroin. no idea he did heroin. <laughs> like It you, made sense once I found out. I was like, I could see that totally. But I couldn't see it, man. He's too smart to go through that life sober. You think so? Oh, yeah. yeah. He's a brilliant there's brilliant a movie. There, there's a movie called, uh, it's either Happiness or um, Before the Devil Knows They're Dead. I don't know if you guys have seen any of oh, those. Oh, yeah, it's a great put, movie. It's one of yeah, Dan's favorites. One, oh, yeah, it's a great movie. Uh, I, I, I can't remember if it's that one. He's the heroin addict. I don't think – maybe it is. That's the one where Ethan Hawke is banging his wife or some shit, right? Yeah, and they rob their parents' jewelry yeah. store. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, I think he's a junkie in that one. Or maybe it's another movie, but I think it is that one. He's a heroin addict. And in that – those scenes, it's like, fuck, man. That's, like, too clo- – that's too real. But uh, it was great. Miss him every day, you know? I know. He, he was one of the best doing it. Uh, I, I was shocked about that. W- where do you go after making Butt Boy, by the way? <clears throat> do you have another movie written? Dick Boy. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, have a, I have a few scripts written that I'm trying to get going. And then um, we just shot a pilot, actually. A tiny cinema pilot. No shit. So we, we have, like, we have we had four more days left on it. But it's kind of like our, uh, our Twilights, our, like, anthology series. It's like... <laughs> Three little sh- sketches rolled into one, and then it's led by this like little handicapped dude. <laughs> it's fucked up, but uh, <laughs> he's like, he's like, he's the ho, and he's great. He's like the coolest dude ever. And uh, yeah, it's like our Twilight Zone. He kind of mirrors you into these different storylines, and then uh, they're all like little butt boys, you know. Okay, so we sh- <clears throat> we shot that, and then we're trying to get another movie going. So, what kind of capper is he? What kind of handicap does he have? You know, I don't even know. He's just, he's so funny because he's anti, uh, he's anti mid, like he's, he's very anti handicap. Like he doesn't like the handicap community. He's like the Larry <laughs> David of handicap people. Um, <laughs> gotcha. You almost but, said the word uh, midget. Is he a midget? Well, he says midget. I only say that because he says it. Uh, sure. He's like, I fucking hate midgets. Yeah. I'm like, you, you kind of are one, but, uh. I don't know. It's, it's interesting. <laughs> it, interesting. Interesting subculture, you know. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I worked with uh, a few midgets, man, on, on movies, and uh, they're fucking weird, dude. First of all, they had their own ta- they have their own talent agency. And I, I know he signed he signed to the agency. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <clears throat> really? Yeah, he is. <laughs> I by the way, I love I, I fucking love this guy. Like I want to hang out with him all the time. Like I'm obsessed with them now. And it was going to go one of two ways because we had to work with handicapped people on Butt Boy as well, and it, it was kind of like a, you know, it, it, we had a nightmare situation kind of. Uh, and we, I just assumed that every handicapped person was like that after that, and uh, <laughs> that's how dumb I am, you know. Yeah. But um, but uh, this guy was really cool. He was really fucking great, and uh, yeah. What was his problem? And then I'll tell you the one with ours. Just diva, like. He was an extra, and we gave, I, I threw him a line. You know, I gave him a line, and then uh, he was like, he wanted to be accredited in the film, and just little things, you know. Oh yeah, uh, just yeah. complaining a lot. And it's little like, things it's of, for a little guy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You think I want to go to this talent agency? Is everything made of toys? What's going on there? <laughs> you, you know, I don't know, but I know toys. this because I've I've hired a couple little people as well. Um, you L- know, LPs, I LPs, think is, yeah. and uh, yeah, you go through the one agency. Their quotes are usually high. We use one mm. in range fifteen, um, yeah. and uh, their their quotes are sh- like shockingly high. They know that they're like a niche group and they're in demand. There's not very many. So like they get Mm -hmm. almost twice as much as a normal, like, you know, day rate for an actor. Um, The, the, the first one we worked with, he was an extreme alcoholic. Yeah. Like depressed with life. And so like every morning somebody would have to go and wake up the midget to get him uh, ready for the the That's like perfect. That's exactly what it should be. Hey Dave, go wake up the midget. Yeah. (laughs) And it's some guy in, in fucking coveralls. (laughs) <laughs> with, with a broom he's like come on midget <laughs> come on midget <laughs> it's like rob zombie all of a sudden <laughs> so, so one night and i'm sure you've had this where it's like you know because you you directed butt boy right yeah yeah so you know a lot of these movies i directed and they're like hey man the the, the cast and crew will be like you got to give us one night just come out and drink with us one night and i was like all right cool man <laughs> But my hours go way beyond yours, you know, because I get to set up yeah, for the next yeah, day yeah. and then produce and deal with all that shit. So they were like, just give us one night. So they're like, come out with the, the, the cast. And the midget was there. And he was in rare form, dude. I mean, <laughs> fucking rocked by like 9.30, 9.45-ish, right? And we're at, we're at their hotel. And everybody's partying, normal partying. He stands up on the bed. Pulls out his dick and he goes, "Man, I know what oh, all God. you motherfuckers are thinking, but he goes, this is normal size. There's a difference in fucking dwarfism.'" And goes off, right? Finishes oh, by pissing all over the bed, and then he blacked out. And so, like, we had to this pull, up, we had to pull up his pants, tuck him in bed inside the bed that he had pissed in. Did you tell him a bedtime story? <laughs> no, dude. <laughs> but there was like thirty people in this tiny fucking hotel we had to put him in Jesus. bed and uh yeah yeah um then he woke up the next day and then you know we were all kind of like gingerly dancing around the subject of what had happened the night before and he goes look i fucking know what i did i'm not embarrassed you know do you remember like, uh right. peter which means he is um, yeah peter <laughs> peter dinklage and in bruges is it like that yes yes if very, you haven't seen that movie yeah, by the way yeah. it's fucking great i love that movie it's a great movie it's an amazing movie. It's probably Colin Farrell's best scene. movie. The Dank. It's probably Colin Farrell's best movie. It is. Done, right? It is. Yeah, Colin one Farrell's. of one of. <clears throat> yeah. Whoa, are yeah. you a big Colin Farrell fan? Yeah, I love. Yeah, he's good. What else do you he's like? Good. I like. Uh, I really enjoyed Killing of a Sacred Deer. Did you guys see that? No, I haven't seen that yet. No, I haven't seen that one yet. That's it. That's kind of an absurd. It's pretty out there. And the lobster was interesting too. <laughs> he's a really uh, funny guy. Yeah, yeah the lobster was good. Yeah, the lobster was good. A little slow <clears> again. But, yeah, a little uh, slow. But he, Killing of a Sacred Deer, check out. It's the same director, but uh, it's his, it's the one after that, and it's good. I miss the old Colin Farrell. He used to rage back in the day. I mean, oh, absolutely yeah. tear can, the doors off the place. Is you it weird that. that he's playing uh, the Penguin in the new Batman movie? Is he really? Yeah. I didn't know that. I I'm, it, da- I'm down for that. Same. Um, I, it's I'm, so weird. If, I, I don't compare it to Dan DeVito. It's going to be something different. So Yeah. I mean, it's so Robin Robert Pattinson is Bruce Wayne Batman. Yeah, I'm not yeah. I, like I don't know how that's going to play out with the kid from Twilight as the new Batman. I think it'll be good. You know actually. what? Che- I think it's going to be good. Check out. Uh, have you guys seen Good Time? 
Mm-mm. No. It, it's on Netflix now. Check that out, too. That's a really, it's a great, it's like a gritty New York Scorsese kind of movie. Uh, and Robert Pattinson's insane in it. He's so no good. shit. Yeah. I've heard yeah. he's. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's, that, just go, that just went to Netflix. It's the same guys who did Uncut Gems. It's the movie before Uncut Gems. Gotcha, gotcha. What, what, are, what, are, what other indies are out there that you've been watching during the, the pandemic and all that shit that you can recommend? I just watched you know, one been, with uh, Pete Davidson on Hulu. Yeah, I heard that was good. I haven't seen that yet. It's good, except it was it was a really good movie, except there was no ending. And I was like, fuck you. Like it, The movie yeah, just yeah. kind of stopped. It was like they forgot the third act. It's one it was, of those credit scenes where it's like, god damn it. Yes. Yeah, I know. That drives me crazy. Same. I'm such a fan of plot, you know? I'm such a sucker for plot and the structure. Same. But, uh, I watched mid-90s that Jonah Hill uh, wrote and directed. Mm-hmm. I like that. Mm-hmm. Same thing, that though. That was good. Yeah, with the end, yeah, though. Yeah, it had that ending, yeah. Same ending where it was just like it just kind of stopped and you're like, all right, what happened to this kid? Is he a fucking heroin addict or what? It's the indie thing to do. It is. Man, I don't know. I don't know what I've been watching. I've been watching uh, as far as indies go. I kind of have. I've been editing this pilot thing, so I've been plenty busy during this. But uh, I watched that show. What's the ba- the Jason Bateman one? Not, Ozark. Um, not Ozark. The, uh, there's the other one. Oh, the uh, HBO one. Oh, yeah. The Outsiders. The, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's been interesting. That's been pretty good. I uh, I really like the beginning of it, anyways. But uh, I haven't seen that one yet. Yeah, I I I'm probably about halfway through it. Ben Mendelsohn is in that from Bloodline. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he's good. It's one of those. I things- heard it slows down though. I, I heard it like kind of loses its momentum from the beginning. But it slowed down for me halfway through already, which is kind of like why I'm you know yeah taking yeah. my time with the rest of it. But I think Jason Bateman knew. That Hollywood was going to stop making comedies, and he just pivoted hard into dramas, and he's been killing. Oh it. yeah, dude, those first two episodes he directed too, man. They they were awesome, <clears throat> gnarly, and he directs all of Ozark too. Yeah, yeah, I know he's a beast. Who would have thought? Fucking crazy, man. It's too much work, and he's like fifty one, and he looks like he's ten still. Yeah, he's always Jason Bateman. He's he's uh, he's doing it right. Where do you hope the pilot goes to? By the way, are you guys going to ship it out to like Comedy uh, Central? Yeah, we pitched it to everybody. This is kind of like a proof of concept based on a pitch we did to everybody. So we went to Adult Swim and uh, Comedy Central, and Adult Swim was kind of like, give us a little bit more, uh, or, or you know, show us a part of it. And we were like, fuck it, let's just do the whole episode. That way, you know, if it does, if something does happen with it, uh, you know, we don't have as many notes. We don't have as much to apologize for. So we just did the whole thing. And actually, we didn't. We had to stop production because of this. But we had three days left. And then we stopped uh, shooting it. But, um, but yeah, I'm editing the rest of it now. And then we're going to pick up once this is over, if it ever is. Is, so. it, the, is it the same guys that are in, in the rest of Tiny Cinema, Cinema with you? Yeah, there's a, few, there's a few of those and a few new people, too. So it's, it's just bigger. It's, uh, you know, it feels like a TV show. It's kind of like the sketches we do on our Instagram, but bigger production value, more people. Just there's a lot more to it. But, um but yeah, yeah. We, like we expanded. You know the motherfuckers one. I remember you saying you liked that one. It was one of my favorites. That, that's that's the third one we were shooting. So we made it this long. It's a little bit longer, and it's like this full night with these guys. Oh man, I love those guys. That was, that's one yeah, of my yeah. favorites of yours. Yeah, so that's that's like one of them. And then you throw the host in there, and he's kind of guiding you around this weird town. And yeah, that's kind of the idea. That's but, dope. I can't wait for that. Uh, who else is out there that you want to work with? I mean everybody, man. Like the list, the list is long. You know, I, I, I really want to be able to just continue to make movies. That's been my whole thing, my whole mo. And uh, yeah, Butt Boys weirdly done. It's opening a lot of doors for me, and hopefully more that that happens more with it coming out. But even from the festival release, I've had a lot. Of, I met with a lot of great people already and had some crazy opportunities from it, which is crazy to say a stupid movie about a guy putting shit up his ass, but. Uh, People have responded well to it, so you know I yeah. feel I feel lucky right now. The reviews have been lights out online. I, like I haven't heard, I haven't read a bad review yet. Yeah, thanks, man. I, it's been crazy. It's been wild. I, I expected there's been there's been a few people that don't get it. I expected it to be at least fifty fifty, but it's just been it's been crazy. It's been nice. Yeah, when so. you when you look at your IMDb rating for the movie, if if it's a five, like if it's a five out of ten. It served its purpose. That means half the audience got the joke. The other half probably didn't. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, yeah. Um, I've always wanted right. to work with Nick Cage, by the way. Oh, yeah. That's that's high on my list. 
So one of my one of the scripts I'm working on, I guess I can say because I don't, it's a long way off. But uh, and I briefly told Lionsgate about it, and they were like kind of into it. But um, it, it, do you guys ever see the original Reanimator? Yes, mm-hmm. yes. Uh, so I have a I have a re and the the guy who directed that was actually my directing teacher in school. He just uh, passed away. He just, he just died. Yeah, yeah. it's a bummer. It, it it killed me. He was a great teacher, but uh, uh, anyways, I have a reboot for that a contemporary a modern version of reanimator that i'm trying to get going and nick cage is like for this one role just seeing him become reanimated would be crazy so fuck yeah so i saw mm-hmm. i don't know if you saw it uh there was a play the Reanim- reanimator the musical was down there i on did a, yeah uh one of my good friends is the lead jesse merlin um mm-hmm. i don't know if you know him but he oh was, really i don't i would love to talk to him about it oh dude he, he's the best and would talk your ear off so uh, obviously, he was super sad that uh, Stu died, and uh, he's yeah. been posting stuff about it. Stu did the musical too, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. uh, he sat in the splash zone for it during all the when they're chopping off all the the, wow. bo- the body parts and shit. And I mean, um, dude, he was my favorite teacher in school. He was just he was the greatest man. And uh, yeah, I just loved his I loved his movies. He was wild. He was crazy. Just yeah, if, if you ever get to do it, you gotta you gotta work with Jesse Merlin. I want to say he did more than like three hundred performances. It was him and uh, Norm from Cheers. No way. Yeah, uh, he was in Reanimator, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they did it forever on on. Uh, I think it was on Pico, if I remember correctly. But uh, yeah. that's crazy. I remember reading all about that because in writing this, I was kind of like, you know, I was I was just doing my research around town. It's crazy though, mm-hmm. man. That that idea. It's pub. It's public domain. It's HP Love. HP Lovecraft wrote it, so you can kind of do whatever you want with it. And uh, yeah, I have this crazy new idea for it. So yeah, that's like my dream project right now. Anyways, it just reminded me of Nick Cage. He's, uh, he's, the, he's the best. We wanted. I wanted to best. put him in Rescue Sixteen, the the sequel to Range Fifteen. Um, but he's getting. He's starting to get big again. You know, they're re, know. they're they're remaking National Treasure. They're gonna do another one of those. So are they? I love those movies. Yeah. So, so do I. It's it's one I, of my guilty pleasures. I National oh, Treasure. Dude. What about They're Gary so Busey? Good. What's going on with Gary Busey right now? Oof, Busey. That guy's. He's wor- definitely getting. He's definitely gonna get the virus. Yeah, yeah. You don't There's think? No way. You, are you saying you're making a judgment statement about Gary Busey's hygiene? I'm saying he looks like coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> how, I, how I see it in my head <laughs> is Gary Busey's face. <laughs> I think it, no, it, I don't know. I love I love him too. He's he's horrible to work with, but uh, we want to have him yeah. on the show. It's Jared's dream guest of Drinking mm. Bros. We've never had him on yet. Well, we we wanted to hire him as our chief scientist for a while. <laughs> <laughs> for black and coffee, yeah. Him in a lab coat, <laughs> just <laughs> getting so jacked on coffee. Well, and other things, coffee. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> he's uh, he's still boozing pretty hard. I bet. Oh yeah, he's got to be. Has to be, right? Yeah. Well, so am I. Yeah. What, what <laughs> I think during this you? quarantine, there's a couple of different types of people. There are people who are and who are either working as usual. They're first responders. They're working more. Mm-hmm. Then there, are, there's everybody that's stuck at home, and there's we've kind of separated ourselves into a couple of groups. The uh, yeah. suicidal ones that just drink and do drugs all day. Yep. And then everybody but- else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, true. And I think it's like gravity. Everybody's kind of making their way down to suicidal and doing drugs and drinking all day. Yeah, I mean, there's still another thirty days of this um, at a minimum, yeah. and it could be extended. Are you single? Or are you dating anybody right now, Tyler? I'm dating someone right now. Is she with you during this quarantine time? Uh, we split it. I have my own place, so I was with her for the first couple of weeks, and I just came home just to get some work done here. I'm gonna, I'm going to go back there tonight, but that's been nice because I have to places to go so that's great let me ask you this have you reached the end of your sexual positions and what you guys have tried yet uh no i think we have still we still have more to go i think we're still good it's because of that separate we're not you know we're able to go to different places so have you you thought about for a situation like this in the future maybe making a butt boy card game oh that's good oh yeah you draw cards let's see let's see how it does if it does it's something we can come out with yeah it's like uh words against humanity Except for our cards against humanity, even instead you shove stuff up your butt. Yeah, you shove things up your ass. Whatever yeah. card you draw, yeah. you got to stuff it up your cards ass. Cards can be disposable; they dissolve in your asshole. Yeah, yeah. Or you you bring out you know it's it's like operation where the pieces come with it, 
and you're like, all right, great. So if you've got to put a Matchbox car up your ass, what if you did it this it's way? It's there. What if it's that's, that's what? It. What if you send like you draw a card and you walk into another room and you come back and people have to guess what you just put up your ass? Ah, I like that too. Based on how good. you're walking, like they can give you. You don't commands. even need the game. They, they can, can give you do that without a game. <laughs> that's true, but I'm trying to make you money, asshole. Fucking yeah, uh, yeah. Just uh, you can give them commands. Yeah, like you got to walk around, and then I observe then, you walking, and by that squat by your posture, yeah. And then if you're the that's one that's one. walking, you've got to you've got to con people of like, all right, maybe I should take this, yeah, you know, uh, like a, a few a few less steps and yeah. not make them not think that there's a wallet up my ass yeah. or you know whatever it is. Right. And then you a can wallet get, would be good. A wallet would be good, yeah, because it's not made for that. Yeah, but in yeah. your in your trailer, like I remember seeing the first one. I think there was like miners up there and like kids and things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, dogs, dogs, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, uh, game board pieces. Yeah, well, that would be the first. I think that would be the first thing you would stuff up there. One of those little sorry pieces. Well, he the character relapses halfway through. It's been a year since he's done it, and he's playing sorry with his kid. <laughs> and, his, and his kids, his kids, the app in his ear off, and he just has this. All of a sudden, it comes back, and he just stares at this sorry piece, and that's his relapse. <laughs> Oh god damn it! I can't wait for this. Yep. Um, this and that Michael Jordan doc are the last yep. two things on my <clears throat> list of like, all right, that's that's all we have, and then this this bullshit better be over because we'll be out of mm-hmm. entertainment at that point. Yeah, I think yeah, I, it's going to be a long time. I mean, everybody, all my friends that work here in the industry are all fucked right now. It's it's horrible. I mean, everything stopped production, and I mean, it's the whole world, obviously. But um, but Hollywood in but particular. He, Hollywood is like they have these movies lined up that like the banks are backing out of loans now. So like movies that were supposed to be done all next year are done. There's nothing. So, um, yeah, it's just it's weird. It's wild. But, um, yeah, what can you do? Yeah, I think you're on to something with the pilot, though, because TV TV is thriving right now. And Mm -hmm. um, in particular, comedy. I I just saw that that Aquafina show on uh, Comedy Central. I haven't seen that yet. Her season finale was the highest rated they've ever had so there is a need for comedy out there and uh you know fuck man yeah i'm i'm glad i'm glad you're you're into it and you're still doing it yeah man that's it what else can i what else can i do i don't see it any other way you gotta laugh so yeah gotta laugh yeah man especially in times like these so uh yeah. tyler i we appreciate you stopping by today my man um, yeah, this was great. It was good to see you guys. Yeah, you Hell yeah, you too. <laughs> this is the point in the show we get to the drinking bro of the week, which is someone uh, who's inspired you or helped you. Maybe somebody who helps you make butt boy. Who would you like to give your drinking bro of the week to? Uh, I'll give it to uh, my buddy Bill Morian. Okay. William Morian. Does that have to be famous? or no. should I just Yeah. My buddy William Morian. Shout oh. out to him. What did he do on the, on the, on the film? He's executive producer and, uh, yeah, he... He, and he shot the movie too, so he was both. So, oh, he was the DP as well. Yeah, shit. Yeah. So <laughs> shout out to him, and he's one of my main drinking buddies. So, awesome, Full awesome circle. man. Well, look, looking forward to it. Uh, if you're at home, you were bored and want to laugh. This looks like the funniest movie of all time. You guys certainly have the greatest Instagram out there. Please go rent Butt Boy on uh, Amazon Prime and or iTunes or Google Play or Xbox. Uh, looking forward to raging the second this comes out thanks again tyler appreciate it thank you guys so much all right take care bye buddy have a good one